We are now ready to begin layout all of our UVs. So let's select all of the meshes and I'm going to move the window UVs and the AC down here in the bottom. So all of these UVs here will need to be positioned inside the zero to one space. Let's briefly cover texture resolution. This zero to one space is relative. This means that this size could be 256 by 256 or it could be 2048 by 2048. And the texture size is set when you save the UV layout. So you need to know what you want your starting texture size to be. That way you can begin to treat this 0 to 1 space as those dimensions. So for our mesh, we're going to create the texture at 4096 by 4096. And this is a very large size, but we also have a very large mesh that we need to fit a lot of detail into. So by creating our texture at 4K, we'll be able to lower the resolution to 2048 by 2048 or to 1024 by 1024 if we need to. So if our texture size will start at 4096 by 4096, that means each of these squares, their size will be 1024 by 1024. So now we can begin to understand that when we place all of these shells, we'll have an idea of how much texture space the UV shells take up. So we're gonna need to position and fit all of these selected shells inside 0 to 1 space. This shell up here, that is the back and the side ground plane, will not be a part of this layout. It's going to be treated as its own separate object and will receive its own texture. Let's reselect all of these UVs again. And we're going to manually position all of these UVs and organize them inside the 0 to 1 space. And you might be asking, well, isn't there an easier way to automatically lay everything out? And yes, there is. We could use one of the automatic functions to help us lay out the UVs. So if you go to Modify, Layout Options, we could tweak these settings, and my LT will position all of our selected UVs inside 0 to 1 space. This is a great option but in that case, it's gonna cause more problems. So let me show you what would happen if we did use it. I'm going to set texture map size to 2048, shell and tile padding to four pixels, multiple objects to pack together, and translate shells. Then click on layout UVs. When message pops up for non-manifold geometry, just click fix. And here it lays out our UVs but the problem is it unpacks stacked UVs and it resets our texel density for certain shells. It's also very difficult to tell what's what. So this is not the best option for us. And what we're going to do instead is arrange the shells that we have manually. This way we have full control where everything goes and how everything will be organized. Let's begin. I'm going to undo. And the first thing you want to make sure is to select all the meshes in the scene. This way you work with all of the UVs. So let's select all the UVs and begin to scale them down. So the largest UV shell, which is in the back of the building, takes up about two grid units, which will be 2048 by 1024 texture size dimensions. It doesn't have to be precise. We just wanted to occupy two grid space units across. This way we'll be able to fit all the other shells inside 0 to 1 space. We should also probably delete a few faces in the back of the building that the player is not going to see. This will give us a bit extra UV space. So let's switch over to face component mode and select these faces. And press delete. The faces here on the side, we are going to leave. And a few faces here, we're also going to delete. For the face that's on the other side of the stairs, we're simply going to take the bottom vertice and move it up. Make sure you have preserve UVs enabled. 
So double click on the move tool and enable preserve UVs. And we're going to raise this VRC all the way up, snapping it to the top VRC and check to make sure that there are no gaps between the wall and the stairs. And everything is looking good. We don't have any gaps. We'll further optimize this mesh, but we just wanted to remove a few faces in order to maximize our UV layout. Let's select all the meshes and select all of their UVs. Our goal now is to begin to organize all of these UV shells inside 0 to 1 space. I like to start with the big main shells first and then work on the smaller shells later. I'm going to move the UVs for the secondary shapes outside 0 to 1 space. So all the shells for the pipes, steel bars, doors, windows, rails, stairs and so on will be placed outside so that way we can focus on on the main building first and then we'll begin to introduce and place all those UVs back in. I'm also going to take all of the UVs for the roof and move them down here. The very top border for the roof I'm going to place it inside our layout right in here. And I'm going to leave this as is and I'm not going to cut it or scale it down. I'm going to continue to organize the main shells for the building and we want to place them very close to each other yet we do want to leave a bit of padding between each shell. Most of these large shells will occupy majority of our layout. I'm going to quickly fix this angled face by grabbing the vertex and just snapping it to the grid so it's straight. I like to keep the UV editor and the perspective viewport open at the same time. This way when I select a UV shell and I am not sure where it goes, I go to perspective viewport and hit F. This centers view on selection and it becomes easy to figure out what that shell is and where I should place it. Right above the garage door we have a few UV shells that I want to move and sew. The first two shells belong to a small border above the garage door holder. So switch over to edge component mode, select these two edges and choose move and sew. This distorts the UV shell because the two UV shells did not have the same texel density. So I'm going to select its UVs and choose unfold along U. This will fix the shell. Now we want to reset the texel density. And we can't use the value of 1 anymore because we've scaled all of our UVs. So our texel density is now different. So let's sample new texel density from one of our main UV shells, such as this one. We're going to select its UVs. Under texel density, click get. This is our new value. And then select the shell for the small border and click set. Then we want to combine all the shells for the garage door holder. Select the edges here at the top and the bottom and then choose move and sew. Again we want to select the UVs and I'm going to run unfold along U which will distort the shell a bit. So to fix it I'm going to run straighten UVs and then set texel density. So during this stage it's very common that you may find shells where you want to separate or combine them as you work through this. We did a lot of work up to this point already. So a lot of the shells are ready to go, just need to be positioned. But a few shells we did miss, just like the garage door holder and deleted faces on the back. So a few things I missed and it's during this stage where I catch them and fix them. The shell that goes in the front of the store behind the steel bars. I will scale it down slightly and position it inside this space of the shell. So it's okay if you need to scale down some shells in order to make them fit into certain sections. It's not going to be that noticeable when you make these minor adjustments. What you really want to watch out for is a large difference between textile density when these objects are next to each other. Here is a shell that contains faces which won't be seen by the player. And the shell is hidden 
behind the window shutters. You can delete these faces if you want to. I am going to keep them and I'm going to scale down the size of the shell to occupy a small amount of UV space and then position it right here. By the time we are done, this face in the back is going to be just a single polygon. So we're not going to worry about removing it. And just as I've mentioned before, it's a lot easier to remove faces from your mesh than it is to add them back in. So when we get to the optimization stage and we need a lower poly count, then I would remove that face. But for now, we'll keep it. So this entire process is very straightforward. Our goal is to continue organizing these shells inside zero to one space. Sometimes we might have to separate some shells and other times combine by using move and sew. And it's almost like putting together a puzzle where you are trying to find the right space for the specific size of the shells you have. And you don't have to follow my exact layout. It's all a matter of personal preference of how you want to organize your layout. What you want to keep in mind is trying to maximize the space so all the shells fit and you have minimal amount of unused UV space. For the top of the roof, I'm going to decrease the shell so it occupies less UV space. In my case, the player will not be able to reach and walk on top of the roof. So the textile density is not as important. If in your case, the roof will be accessible and the player will walk on top of the roof, you may want to keep the same textile density and not resize the shell. So anytime you have a mesh or a specific part of a mesh that will not be seen up close by the player and it's at a distance, you can lower the texture size as well as the textile density of the mesh since you won't need all that texture detail. I am continuing to organize the shells, move them around and trying to find the most ideal location for each. I'm also beginning to introduce all the other shells I've moved out. So things like the sidewalk, the drain pipe, the electric pipes, rails, etc. I'm beginning to move them in and establish a space for them. So this is a constant work in progress where you might end up having to redo sections of the entire layout or sometimes even the entire layout especially when you have to deal with so many shells. So here for the wires, let's select all the UVs and I want to make them straight. So let's run straighten UVs with 45 degrees and both U and V enabled. Then I'm going to improve the layout of these wires a bit by moving them closer, getting them more organized and then move it right into this space which fits perfectly. Let's go ahead and finish this up. We just have a few more shelves left. The doors, door frames, windows, AC units, room interiors, the interior planes, and the building window frames. And as we finish this up, this entire UV process was fairly simple. We only used a handful of techniques and we kept the principles of maintaining the same textile density across most of geometry and overlapping the UV shells that will share the same texture while trying to avoid objects that may have noticeable texture repetition and in that case we separated the shells. So here we are our current layout and we do have some unused UV space and even though as much as I don't like to have any unused UV space. It does come with the territory when you have to manually lay out your UVs. So instead of reworking the entire layout, trying to maximize the UV space, which is something you might have to do once in a while, and also due to time constraints, we're going to leave this layout as is. We just have some unused space, but overall, it's a good layout. So what we're going to do is give a bit more UV space to certain shells 
that I feel not getting enough of the UV space right now. So I'm going to select this entire section here and increase it in scale. Then increase the scale of the doorknob UVs, then glass, windows, interior planes, AC unit, steel bars, pipe drain brackets, and electric meter. I'm not increasing the size too much, but enough to give a bit more UV space. Alright, let's take a look around the mesh and do a quality check. And everything's looking good. Now select the side, back, ground plane, and I'm going to position these UVs inside 0 to 1 space. We're now going to try to match the textile density of the building. We'll do that through a texture size. So in the end, it will match what we have on the building. Our last step is to save UV layout screenshot, which will help us with texturing later. So let's select all the meshes except for the side ground plane so we can see all of the UVs. Then go to image, UV snapshot. Make sure that this points to your Maya LT project directory and into images folder. This should be set automatically, but if it's not, then you can click on browse and point it to the right folder for the image to be saved. For image format, I'm going to choose JPEG. For size, X and Y, we'll use 4096 by 4096. And then click on Apply and Close. Let's check. Navigate into your project Maya directory, into Images folder. And here's our UV snapshot. Everything's looking good. Let's go ahead and rename it to UV Layout Miami Corner Store. And we'll use this during the texturing phase. And that is it. We are done with our UVs and the UV layout.